Today we're going to be learning about life in early Kentucky through the lens of the first city founded in Kentucky, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. The standards we're going to be talking about are compare life in the past to life today in communities, identify information from two or more sources to investigate characteristics of a community, Construct responses to compelling questions about oneself and one's community. And construct an explanation about their community's civic life, history, geography, and or economy. So what are we going to be doing? We are going to be taking a virtual tour of Kentucky State Park, Fort Herod, and talk about the history of Kentucky's oldest city, Harrodsburg, Kentucky, and listen to an interview of one of its current residents. Back in 1773, Captain James Herod cut down the first tree in the place that we now know as Kentucky. When he cut down this tree, this signaled the beginning of the colonial settlers moving to Kentucky to build their towns and take over the land for the American colonies. James Herod constructed Fort Herod to protect those settlers from animals living in the area and to fend off attacks from Native Americans who had been living there first. He brought with him 30 men at first to prepare the fort and make it ready for the rest of the women and children to help build cities and work in the community. That same year, a war started called Dunmore's War because the settlers began to take the Native Americans' land without permission and were destroying their forests and hunting all of the animals that the Native American used for food. So the Native Americans began to fight back, forcing the people at Fort Herod to abandon the fort for a year. After that, they returned and began to build a community within that area. The town around the fort was officially named Harrodsburg by the Virginia General Assembly in 1785. In Fort Herod, they had many things, like a blacksmith, gunsmith, they had people who made soaps, baskets, and even a schoolhouse. Fort Herod had the first school in the state of Kentucky. There were many families there that built their lives around the fort, and tried to survive the cold winters and grow many crops in the spring. Life during that time was very different than the life we know today. They didn't have running water or electricity and they had to grow everything that they used. Can you imagine what that would have been like? Now one of the volunteer historians who works at Fort Herod is going to share with us some of what it was like to live back during the times of Fort Herod. She's also going to share with us what daily life was like for children and young adults and how they would make rugs and other general history from that time. Well, where you are, you are in Ann McGinty's Ordinary and she was the lady who brought the first spinning wheel to Kentucky. And she made the first cloth here out of buffalo wool and stinging nettle. And she took, it took you really two years to get one piece of clothing. So think about the shirt you're wearing. It took you two years to get that. And then her husband, William, made the first loom, just like these. These are around 200 years old. And he also made the first plow and planted the first corn and brought the first hogs to Kentucky. So the loom that I have here today is threaded, and it takes about 10 days just to get it ready. And you have to spend all winter making thread, and children learn to sew and spin at the age of six. And they wore nightgowns until they were six years old. Because it took so long to make clothing, they outgrew it before they got it. So when they turned six, then they got their big people's clothes, and then they could wear them for about four or five years before they outgrew them. And then you pass clothes down in your family because you aren't the only child in the family. You've got a family of 15 children. So everybody had to share their clothes as they outgrew them. So our looms today, this one is a rug that I'm weaving on here. And I take basically strips of cloth. They didn't make rugs in this day because they didn't have the extra cloth like we do today. But you have to get the loom ready. So we have foot pedals down on the floor, and that lets you open the threads so that you can pass a shuttle all the way through. You bring it into place, and you've got to pack it down because if you don't, you'll have a hole in your rug. And then you want to come back the other way. 
but you can't come through those threads. So this part right here is going to change. So you're gonna see those change position. You lock that row into place, and then you come from one side to the other. Every time you make a pass, you've got to change. And this is the way all cloth is still made today. It's just by a big machine. So this basically, when you go upstairs, it's going to be an end. And if you spent the night here in the end, you have beds and you have to share it with four or five strangers at the time. And then you could have a meal at two because it was a restaurant and you can eat all you want and get full. And then if you have leftovers, you get an eight o'clock cold supper. So in that day, there's no refrigeration. So you have to eat all the food up today that was cooked today. But you can make whatever you want on a loom. You can make fine cloth for clothes or you can make a pattern on a loom. You just have to work the loom up, get it ready to weave, and then know what petals to use. But how exactly is life in Fort Herod different from life in Harrodsburg today? Now a modern day resident of Harrodsburg, Kentucky is going to share with us his experience of living in Harrodsburg today. My name is Gabriel Tuggle. I'm 23 years old and I've lived in Harrodsburg all my life except for when I was in college. I graduated from Mercer County Senior High School in 2016, and then I got my bachelor's degree from UK in 2020. My family, my immediate family, has always lived here. My grandfather bought a farm here in 1970 when my dad was a little boy, and we've been here ever since. We appreciate the size of Harrodsburg. It's not too big and not too small. You might see someone you know in public, and then again you might not. There's a strong sense of community here, and most of the residents are very homey, hardworking people. I've never met a mean person in Harrodsburg. Growing up in Harrodsburg, my dad ran a feed store, so my siblings and I spent a lot of weekends and summers there when we weren't in school. I got to know a lot of the farming and agricultural community that way, and they were all great people who had spent most, if not all, of their lives here. In my memory, I know it wasn't this way, but in my childhood memory, Harrodsburg is always sunny, always 70 degrees and sunny and green. Everything there just seems so green, and I guess that relates to all the fond memories I have of the town. My teachers, they were all respected members of the community, and when I was in high school, I worked at Dairy Queen, and the owner, he was a respected member of the community. It just seems like everyone in Harrodsburg is a respected member of the community. It's a really welcoming and charming place to live in that way. Another thing I like about Harrodsburg is that it rarely changes. Some businesses go in and out, but the integrity has never been altered. Main Street looks the same now as a whole as it did 20 years ago when I was a kid. The same can be said for pretty much any location here. I see pictures from 30 or 40 years ago, not much has changed. People live in the same houses, old buildings have always looked the same. It's rare that something new gets built, and when it does, it's a pretty big deal. I love that aspect, but I can see how others might not. It's just a small town. Now let's reflect on our own communities and where we are from. Think about what city you are from and where your family is from. Can you describe the physical characteristics of the community? Think about your guardian's job. How does your loved one contribute to the community? When you reflect on this, I want you to write it down, think to yourself, and or share with a partner. Here is an example of what that reflection may look like. I am from Shelbyville, Kentucky. My family has lived there almost my whole life. It is about 30 minutes from outside of Louisville. Some of the physical characteristics of Shelbyville, Kentucky is that it has a lot of businesses downtown, it has a bunch of parks, and lots of places for people to hang out. My guardian's job is that my dad is a doctor. My dad helps the community by taking care of those in need when they are sick and they come to the hospital for help. 